We're here today at Francis and Jack England's property, Shepherd's Hill, and Jack's going to talk to us today about his auto draft, um, the EID in his sheep and the management decisions he's using them for, and he'll also show his bulk sheep handler and how that makes life easier when handling sheep in the yards. So today we're just going to just show you the ropes on how we use a Murray sheep handler. It's a bulk sheep handler, it makes your life a lot easier just for lifting the sheep up off the ground. Once their feet are off the ground, they're very pliable. You can do what you want with them. It's, it's very useful, stress-free on the stock, stress-free on us, stress-free on the dogs. We're putting some neck tags on just so we can mother up lambs with the, each of the mums. And then we can get that information through to sheep genetics uh, along with the sire that we've artificially inseminated to, into each of them. Then we're going to show you the use of a Gallagher sheep auto drafter. And it's, it's an old uh, chestnut. It's probably about 15 years old and it's still going. It's an old scale head. It works well just because I'm using it in conjunction with an Excel database and just copying the file straight through that. We, we've had the auto drafter, I think it's probably about 12 or 15 years now. And gone are the days we, we used to have Grant Woods from JBS Bordertown come on out and he'd take the draft and, and they'd wear any penalties for any of the, the sheep that are un, underweight or didn't meet their target specs. So since then, it necessitated us to use an auto drafter because uh, JBS, they took over from there and, and they, they stick to their grids. And so essentially what we can do is just make sure that we hit that grid and not get any uh, losses. This here is the component tree that, that scans the, the EID tag and from there it talks back to the, the, the monitor that I've got here and it tells me which way that I've already got predefined which drafting gate that I want them to go out to. Generally, when we're doing most commercial stuff, we want to capture the, the, the data weights relative to the, the EID e tag on each of the animals. So I can go back to the computer afterwards, compile that information to help me generate my, my ranking indexes for all my sheep. If you're not confident in doing that yourself, you can capture the data. There are plenty of software providers or independent consultants that help you develop this information. So again, as each of the sheep come along here and it scans the RFID tag number on the on the year, and then the, the software programs choosing which way which way they need to go, whether they're each of the different side lines. We so this one here doesn't actually have a tag, so I have to do a manual override because at the moment it's set to scan the EIDs. And you don't actually have to do this. You can turn the EID function off and just draft based on your weight parameters alone. So with your heavies, mediums and lights. This is only a three-way auto drafter. Uh, you can either choose the draft or they can run straight ahead. So commercially speaking, when we're weighing by ourselves, like some cross crossbred lambs, when they're coming around through here and, and uh, doing the weigh in a three-way auto draft, one person, we're expecting around about that 450, sometimes 500 an hour, just because we don't have someone really feeding them into the crate and only filling up the pens. When you've got two or three people here really pushing them in, you can do that six, 700 an hour. Uh, Bio reports, I mean, some of the pro-way guys, uh, the Prattley scales, they, they can really get up to that, that 800, 900 uh, when they're weighing and, and drafting. But we chose to go with the Gallagher because I knew a few people and had seen it in, in action and it worked really well and it serves our purposes. What we've done, we've come back in from the, the sheep yards. We've got the auto drafter. Now I'm about to change my draft lists so I can swap that over uh, using the, the animal performance software. And most of the stuff, all the data that we collect is all through uh, spreadsheets. Um, I'll put it on Excel and uh, do all the, the data sorting from there. This is some of the data that we collect on for each of the individual animals. So here we've scanned her electronic ID and she was born from a red tag that was a four-year-old and a single birth type. So this, this was a born a single, so I'm only going to compare each of these single sheep with other single sheep when I go through my index that I develop for each of them. Some of the other information we've got, we've got your fibre diameter, your standard deviation of your fibre diameter, coefficient of variation, your comfort factor, curvature of the fibre, your spinning fineness, your greasy fleece weight, your yield, uh, and then a calculated uh, clean fleece weight and a body weight for each of these animals. And at crutching time at a yearling age, whenever we go through, uh, we give them a DAG score as well for all of the animals that come through. So anything that's got a DAG score of three, well, that's gonna get joined to a pole dorsal because we don't wanna keep breeding those traits. So once we've got the actual index of all the animals, it's easy for me to 
copy all of those RFID tag numbers by after I've readjusted them, sorted them from the highest index all the way down, we'll scroll to the bottom. So we've gone from an index of, a, of 120 down to around about your 71. So these animals here, they're, they're far inferior. Uh, I still retain them from my herd or I can sell them if I want to and join them to a pole dorset. So I'm culling 25% of the animals that were born as a single and I'm retaining, uh, culling 15% only of the animals that are born as a twin. Um, I'm doing that because twins are obviously more desirable to have more lambs on the ground when you come into your spring so you get better use of your of your pasture growth curve. Uh, you, when your feed is cheap in the spring, might be 20 or 30 dollars a ton of your feed relative to a supplementary feed of 400 dollars a ton i'd much prefer to have more mouths born on the ground when my, i'm growing the most amount of feed to get the best pasture utilization so now that we've discussed the commercial herd let's get back into the stud side of things with the auto drafter that, that we're using at the moment so we've drafted in the the initial draft into singles twins and and the ewes that, that didn't conceive via artificial insemination and so we call them into the backup profile. We've sent them through the drafter, they've been split up, and now I'm, I've just deleted the draft list off the, the monitor, the Gallagher monitor, and now I want to put in the second draft, which will split each of them into their individual sire lines. These are each of the animals relative to the, the EID information. I'll just go back over to the, the, the device, and we'll just see what's on there. Uh, we'll go into the draft list, and I've called this one uh, draft number two and there's 128 animals so we click on this in, this here and we we put it copy it over to the to the weigh scale head and then once that's done we can disconnect it and go and plug it straight in and run the animals through the auto drafter and it'll do the job for us this weigh scale via Gallagher is quite a cheap and simple basic unit the strength of it is is using it with Excel databases um, the new TSI units, they're really good. You can actually go through, if you want to draft by sire or any of these different parameters, it's easy just to plug it into your auto draft to choose that while you're over at the weigh scale and, and off you go. But as I'm reasonably competent and confident with what I do with spreadsheets, I just get this information, I put it into a draft list on my computer, plug it into the, the weigh scale head, and then I go and put it into the auto drafter and off we go. Once you've had a go and they've shown you once, you're like, wow, this is actually not that hard. It's quite easy to do. It can really help you pick up your bottom line performance. While you might not get a return of value uh, doing what I'm doing uh, for the first year, because it costs you, let's just say, $1.50 or $2 to put the e-tags in, $4 to capture the, the fleece data by the time you collect it, pull it off, it includes the labour and the processing costs. Then when you send that information away, you come back. So you've got that data in that first year. It's the second and third and fourth and fifth year of the animals when you're actually retaining your better producing ewes, uh, selling off the ones that are performing or joining them to a pole dorset. And, and also that information uh, doesn't really take into the effect of the overall benefits from year in, year out, because it's progressively going to get better and better. And conservatively, after about five or six years, our ewes here we should return me around about $30 per head for, uh, for each of the animal I collect this, uh, this data information for, so it's quite worthwhile. We've been using RFID now for about sort of five or six years in our sheep herd and, and probably around about, oh, everyone's compulsory for about 15 years in, in uh, cattle and we've just got to make use of this, this uh, information gathering source that, that's in their ears um, yeah, for the benefit rather than just for animal traceability. I'd like to thank Jack and Francis England for sharing their farm business today and how they're using technology within their sheep enterprise.